Hey guys, my name is Jesse Mew, and welcome to a new Cattails series called Finch's Flight. If you guys watched our previous adventures in Cattails, then you probably recognize this little kitty as one of Penny's kittens. This is Finch. He's the son, the firstborn son of Penny and Scout, and he's lived his entire life in the forest colony up until now. Now, with the custom colony update, we're hoping that Finch can make his home up in the Highlands, where Penny loved to spend so much of her time. So, let's see if we can learn anything more about this entire situation from Coco. I'm hoping that Coco and the Forest Guardian might have some information to share. Basically, Penny completed all of the Forest Guardian's quests, and because of that, they allowed her to someday create a colony of her own, but she discovered that her love of the forest colony was just far too strong, and she wasn't willing to leave all of her friends behind. So that's why she wanted to see if she could transfer those powers over to one of her kittens, and Finch has proven himself to be quite the capable mountain king. So hello, Forest Guardian. You have done a great service to the wilds, Finch. I thank you for your patience and perseverance. One day, you will become a great leader. Are you ready to fulfill your destiny and be taught how to create your own colony? Yes, give me the details. If you choose this path, you must leave your current colony behind. Only your spouse and kittens may join you, which uh, Finch doesn't have to worry about because he hasn't gotten that far in his journey yet. I will also send Coco along to help administrate your new colony. Oh, excellent. Coco is going to be helping us every step of the way. I'll grant you a token of authority. It's an ancient artifact that will allow you to claim almost any area of the wilderness as your new colony's capital. So hopefully that means that we can take over the uh, Highland Lake. Be careful. I will only ever grant you one token of authority, and as such, your capital and colony will be permanently located wherever you choose to use it. So we can't change our minds after this. We can't back out. Coco will show you what to do from there. You'll be able to build new walls and construct new dens for wandering cats to move into. Oh, so it sounds like there are actually new cats that we can invite, so we don't have to try to, like, steal other cats from other colonies. Other cats will also flock to your side to defend your territory. From there, you'll be able to grow your influence through battles and diplomacy, as you always have. Are you ready to leave your current colony behind and take your first steps toward leadership? Yeah, I think Finch is ready. It's a big job, but he is certainly the kitten who's ready for the task. Excellent. I've granted you a token of authority in your inventory. Please find a suitable location for your new colony's capital somewhere in the wilderness. Then use the token of authority to claim your first territory. After you do that, Coco will instruct you how to construct a new den for yourself. Go with my blessing. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. We're already getting straight into it too. So the token of authority. Use this item somewhere in the wilderness to found your colony's capital. Cannot be dropped, given away, or sold. All right, so we know exactly where Finch is going to go. We're going to be seeing you soon, Coco. It's nice that he looks so much like Penny, too, because I feel like that's going to soothe Finch a little bit, having somebody by his side who reminds him so much of his mother. So one thing that I do want to note is that I did change uh, Finch's save file over to hard mode. I thought that would keep things interesting, because the way we left our story with uh, Penny Cat is that the Mountain Domain was not too happy with her pushing into their territory all the time. So I figure Finch is probably going to be butting heads with them quite often, so he would have a little bit of a harder time around the forest than uh, other cats. And he's already a little bit nervous it seems because he scared that bunny straight away. Maybe second time's the charm? Oh no, but he just wants to get into the Highlands now. He doesn't have time for bunnies. Well, you can't really blame him. This is a very, very big responsibility that's going to be on his shoulders. But he loves the Highlands so much because there are so many things, so many of his favorite objects around here. Berries, of course. Plentiful food for him to eat. And I have noticed that there are often quite a few frogs and toads that hop around up here, too. And we know how much he loves his uh, little froggy friends. So we're almost to the Highland Lake. 
and that's the area that I really want to see if we can possibly keep under our control. I feel like that would be the perfect place for us to set up our new den. Maybe like right at the top of the lake, so we can gaze across the water every morning. And we have tiny little gifts left behind by Penny too. We know that Finch's mother was thinking about him every step of the way. So here we go, the Highland Lake. We have plenty of fish to scoop up inside this thing. We have herbs over here, berries of course. Another good reason for us to set up our den right at the tippity top. And then all of those delicious rabbits and birds. Though that was never something that Finch seemed to enjoy too much, so I'm not sure how happy he's going to be with that gift. But can we just use this here? You have successfully claimed this area as your colony's capital. Oh my gosh, it actually worked. So Finch is officially the leader of the Highland Lake. So this is it? Looks like you found a great plot of land to start your fresh new colony on. You're going to need a den to live in. I'll show you how to build one. Let me introduce you to the build menu. From the build menu, you can place new structures, remove old ones, and customize the look of your colony. First things first, you'll need to select your den from the build menu by pressing shift and by selecting player's den from the list of options. You'll need to pick a good location for your new den. You can move it around the screen with the W, A, S, and D keys, then place it on the ground by pressing E. You can also change the style of your structures with space. There's lots more styles out there to purchase so you can make your colony your own. Oh, I have seen some screenshots of the different styles. I've been trying to avoid like the live streams and whatnot because I wanted to go into this mostly blind. But I think you guys are going to be very, very impressed with quite a few of the different styles because they look pretty cool. Don't worry about getting the location just right. You can always move structures you place down later. Oh, that's good to know. I was a little bit worried because so much of this seemed so permanent. But if we do get anything wrong, we can just talk to Coco. The build menu also shows you all the controls in case you forgot anything that I told you. Remember, first select a structure to build, then find a suitable spot to place it down. You can also optionally change the style of your structure. Alright, let's get your den ready for move-in. Okay, Finch, the big moment is finally here. So we can basically place like anything around the lake, I guess? There's going to be tons of different items that we can choose from, but first we need to figure out what we're going to pick for our den. So let's choose the player's den. Oh my goodness, that one is beautiful, especially in the fall time because of all of those red leaves. And I love this little archway of branches. Let's see if we have anything else to choose from though. So the plain style and the shabby style. Oh my gosh. Yeah, talk about shabby. All right, it kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, the mountain domain, actually. But I think for our first den, we're going to go with the plain style, because I think it fits in really well with the scenery. So we'll place our leader's den right at the tippity top of this lake. Yeah, that seems like a pretty good place to go if you're looking to uh, potentially talk with the brand new leader of the colony. So let's uh, exit the build menu and see what else Coco has to say. This is a great spot for your new den. You can also build other structures in your colony's capital, but you'll have to purchase them first. Construction materials are expensive. Well, good thing Finch has a little bit of an allowance from Penny Cat. You can add walls around your dens for other cats to move into. Over time, your colony can grow and grow with proper care. If you'd like to build something, talk to me. I can help you with that in my construction shop. Oh, so Coco's a little construction worker. We always thought that he was a very mystical, magical cat, but we didn't know that he could just conjure dens out of thin air. You can also return to the build menu at any time just by letting me know you'd like to. If you need me, I'll be right here. Best of luck, leader. <laughs> oh my gosh, Finch, you have your very own colony to run now. You have quite a bit of work ahead of you. And it is getting a little bit late, too. So let's make sure you're familiar with your surroundings. We have lovely gifts from Penny Cat, as we said before. Some herbs for him to use if he gets a little bit injured. Oh, speaking of which, let's check out, uh, yeah, our map up here. So all of the territory that the forest colony had before he made his colony is still here. 
That means that we're going to have to fight through the forest colony too, just to expand our own land. Yeah, I had a feeling it would be a little bit difficult making our colony up in the corner anyway, because we only have a tiny bit of room to work with. So we're probably going to have quite a few cats pushing into our territory soon, especially the Mountain Domain. I wonder what Leo thinks about all of these new changes. I'm sure this is something that he can sense. He knows there has been a shift in the uh, forest. But yeah, this is Finch's den. It's much, much smaller than Penny Cat's, of course, because he's just starting out. All he really has to his name are his lovely berries, a few extra herbs, and his frogs and his toads, and his licorice root forts. So at the very least, that should keep him full for a few good days in the fall. Now let's take some of the lavender that we gathered up on our way here, and just uh, explore the territory a little bit. So this area is already under our control. We have lots and lots of room to work with, lots of bunnies to scoop up. Oh, this is actually going to be really important in the uh, winter time because the bunnies are some of the easiest prey to find when it's snowing. But I think it would be beneficial for us to spread our lavender a little bit farther away from our territory. So let's scoot on down to the south where the uh, forest colony still has that pathway leading up to the highlands. Unfortunately, we're going to be undoing all of Penny Cat's hard work by spreading this lavender around the place, which is slowly chipping away at their influence. So now at least it's not under their control anymore, and we should be a bit more free to roam this land. Now Finch does have some more experience points to his name. He has already picked up a couple of things from Penny, of course, like the return home ability. He has trained with her a little bit, so he is pretty decent at hunting, pretty good at fighting too. But I thought it might be a good idea for him to unlock the fighting skills, things like the deep cuts ability, which we know that Penny used to her advantage so often. I wouldn't mind checking out one of the different abilities too, something that she hadn't used before like the lion's roar, bellow a mighty challenge to force your enemies to flee. And you know, this might be particularly helpful right now when we have so little territory to work with. So if uh, any nasty enemies do decide to push their way toward our home, we can just let out a mighty roar to scare them away. That way, if we are getting slightly injured, we won't have to worry about getting completely taken out. But let's have Finch return to his den so he can sleep for the very first time inside his brand new place. I wonder if there's a way for us to change the name of our colony too. Because I did notice that this land just said like the custom colony or something. And I'm pretty sure you can also change the banner that's next to its name. So we'll have to see if uh, Coco has anything new to say after we go to sleep for the night curl up with Ruby the ladybug, and hopefully wake up again on a nice bright sunny day. All right, Ruby, I hope you're ready to go on another adventure. Oh my gosh, look at that. We already have so many battles right at our doorstep. Well, Finch, it might be time for you to eat up then. Yeah, we're going to have to take some of these extra herbs along with us just in case. Something tells me these early battles are going to be very, very difficult for him to beat. Let's make sure that we equip our active skills too before we leave, our deep cuts ability, and then our lion's roar, which we'll try out on one of the nearby skirmishes. So we'll be back soon, Coco. We'll be back to talk to you and maybe see what else we can buy in your shop as soon as we make sure that these cats aren't going to step into our home. I believe the first battle is directly below us. So let's see how many cats are fighting today. Oh my gosh, and as I expected, it is the mountain domain that is coming after us now. So let's use our lion's roar ability. Oh my gosh, to send them all running. So some of them did leave the uh, territory, and some of them are also a little bit too scared to re-engage with Finch. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem like that's going to last. Well, he's doing pretty well so far. There's only two more cats for him to take care of, though they do take so much damage off of him. Oh my goodness, little guy. Go ahead and heal yourself up quickly, okay? I think it is all because of the uh, difficulty change, but this makes more sense. 
We know the Mountain Domain has been training for this moment to uh, take control of the Highlands instead of Penny's kittens. So Finch has a lot of uh, big work ahead of him. But I did notice that one of these little power paw rocks is off in the corner. So after that successful battle, he can grab his very first power paw. You are filled with vigor by the ancient token. Your maximum health has increased. Excellent, so now he's fully healed again too. That was a very long battle though. It's already almost noon, and we still have the forest colony to fight down here. So let's return to Coco for now, just to see if maybe we could uh, entice some more cats to come our way. If he has some dens that we can build, then we might be able to maybe attract the attention of a healer or a guard. So hello, Coco. Hi, Finch. How can I help you today? Let's try managing our colony first, just to see if, uh, yeah, change colony, emblem, or name. So this is how we can really make the colony our own. It seems like we could probably change the colony name whenever we want to. So if you guys have any good ideas, then uh, do let me know. But I think for now, we're going to call this the Feather Colony. I thought that would be fitting since Penny loved birds so much. I mean, she named each and every one of her kittens after different types of birds. And since the Highlands is up in such a high place, the Feather Colony seems like a pretty fitting name. So let's see what options we have for the emblem as well. The default gray that we have right now is super, super boring, so we have to pick something that's a bit more fitting toward the Feather Colony. We have a face, lightning, yellow stripes, all different sorts of super cool colors. Oh, the heart one is so cute. Oh my gosh. We might have to remember that for uh, maybe Piper's colony, if she does decide to make a colony of her own, because I have a feeling she'd want to put together a little group of peacekeepers to restore the balance in her name. For now, let's go with this cute little leaf, because I guess it looks the most similar to a feather. Oh, and we can even see the emblem on our home tile. That is super, super cute. So let's see if maybe Coco would be willing to build an extra place to house a new cat. We'll visit his shop. Do you want to buy or sell today? Well, we're hoping to potentially buy some blueprints, okay, to build some special things. So we can make walls, a sturdy wall piece for your custom colony. Oh, I wonder if we have to build these before we can invite other cats. But then there's things like the doctor's den. An empty den with everything a doctor could want. Maybe a wandering doctor will move in if you place it in your custom colony. And that's 400 mews too. So we're not going to be able to buy too many of these right off the bat. But look at that, the guard's den is only 150. An empty den with everything a guard could want. Maybe a wandering guard will move in if you place it in your custom colony. I kind of feel like that would be more beneficial to us right now because we have so many cats knocking on our door, maybe it would be a good idea for us to uh, get a guard on our side. But let's see, the temple style? A pack of temple-inspired architectural styles for your custom colony. Looks like the sacred temple. Oh, no wonder Coco's selling this one. I wonder if that means that the other colonies are selling things that are similar to their styles. We'll have to check that out in the future. Give this to a cat in your custom colony to rename them to anything you'd like. Oh my gosh, and you can recolor them too. Oh, that is going to be so much fun. So we can literally make this entire colony our very own. So I guess that means feel free to leave your suggestions about colors and cat names and things like that as soon as we start inviting new cats. But yeah, let's start with the guard's den. Purchase the guard's den for 150 mews. You've purchased a new structure for your custom colony. You can place the structure in the build menu. All right, Coco, so let's see if we can hopefully uh, start this up right away. We'll open up the build menu again and uh, hopefully put down our guard's den. Oh my gosh, it looks so tiny. That is adorable. So this is the plain style, just like ours. And we'll want to place it somewhere close to the outskirts, I guess because this is supposed to be a guard, so they're going to need to patrol the borders. Do we want to maybe put them on the left side of the lake over here? 
very, very close to where wandering cats from the mountain domain might be trying to sneak into our borders. Yeah, I think that sounds like a good idea to me. So let's go ahead and place our guard stand right over here. Oh, that is so cool. We'll have to see if we can make some walls too, to uh, kind of section it off a little bit, give our guards some extra defense, and just our land in general. We don't want any sneaky little cats trying to uh, weasel their way into our borders. Oh my gosh, Claudius? Hello, little one. Oh my gosh, he is so cute. Look at that face. My liege? It is a blessed day, my new liege. Rest assured that your colony is in good hands. I will protect the borders with my very life. And I shall follow your every order. Claudius has a knack for loyalty. Do not hesitate to speak with me if you need anything. Oh my gosh, you are the cutest thing I have ever seen. Oh, we'll have to see if we can give him some uh, gifts to really get him on our side. Let's strategize. Yes, my liege. Where should I send our cats to fight tomorrow? Oh my gosh, we can actually attack the other cats' borders? So is this like us setting up special places to increase our own territory? Kind of like how the forest colony is currently trying to attack ours down here. You know what I mean? So maybe we should send them like toward the mountain domain? Let's send them to this tile. It shall be done. I will send our fighting cats to that location tomorrow morning. Oh, Claudius, I can't wait. Okay, but let's talk to you too because I want to know more about you. What news can you tell me of the outer borders? Where should we send our reinforcements today? Okay, so he kind of reminds me of Sarge because he's always trying to, of course, keep the colony safe. And a guard's work is never done. But yeah, if you guys can think of any good names for a guard, if you would like to change it from Claudius as it is right now, then feel free to leave your suggestions and uh, maybe we'll try that out in the next episode. But first, we have a little bit of other business to attend to. We need to go see if we can push the forest colony out of our borders. It's so strange to think that we're going to be fighting our own mother and father's colony, of course, because they're still in the forest colony. But we have to make a name for ourselves. I'm sure that Penny was uh, very well aware that this was going to happen. And look at this. Now we have our own cards helping us out. They say we need more food for the colony in the coming months. I'm out here to make sure we get enough to eat. Thank you so much, Herring. Excellent, so it's good to know that we have lots and lots of capable hunters on our hands too. Let's see if maybe we can get a bit luckier with this bunny. Finch used to be so good at catching bunnies. Oh, but he's having so much trouble right now. I bet it's just because he is super, super nervous. It is a lot for one cat to handle. Let's try this one. There you go. You just need a little bit of extra encouragement. And you know, before you go into this battle, let's have you eat one of your favorite toads, because we know that's going to get you pumped. Alright, so here is, um, oh, it's actually the mountain colony? I was sure that this was going to be the forest, but we have so many cats on our side, I think we could definitely take care of them. We're down to just Willow. There we go, and look at all those mews we're gaining for it. Excellent, so thank you very much, Gail. We didn't even take a lick of damage. Oh, I'll never be as good a hunter as Dad wants me to be. Well, you are an excellent warrior, Gail. So I'll bet your father is going to be super proud of you either way. Now, was that by any chance enough to put this area under our control? No, it definitely wasn't. The forest still has the upper hand in the Highland South. So I guess we're going to have a little bit more work to do before we can successfully push out Penny's reinforcements. We'll gather up the lavender. If we spread that around, then we might be able to change the tides. There we go. Now we have a little bit more breathing room. Someday soon, Finch, you will have the entire Highlands to control. And lots of catnip, too. There's even some down here. I know we have a little catnip plant up in the Highlands themselves. Some crows to uh, potentially bring back to Claudius. Yeah, we ought to see um, what sorts of gifts he likes. Since we have the catnip in our inventory, I know that would be the best place to start. Basically, every cat in the forest loves to receive a little bit of catnip as a gift. 
and I'm sure Claudius is going to be no exception. So here you are, little guy. As the very first cat to join our colony, of course you would receive the most precious of gifts. A great and noble thing you offer me. I gratefully accept Finch. He kind of reminds me of um, Arthur too, actually. Arthur from the Mountain Domain, mostly from the way that he's speaking. Let's try the bunnies too, because I think Arthur also liked rabbits. Ah, I was just looking for one of these. I thank you, my liege. He's giving us the same expression as he did for the catnip. So I wonder if that's actually one of his favorites. Very, very interesting. Then the valerian might be a good idea too, because guards typically like herbs. That way... Oh my goodness, the way they have something to work with, but not Claudius. Is something the matter? Why would you give this to me? Maybe he's offended because he thinks that we think he can't take care of himself. Okay, so we'll have to keep that in mind. Claudius does not like Valerian, but he does love bunnies, so at least you have something to do with all of those. What on earth kind of dragonfly is it that? Wait a second, we don't want to lose it. It went across the pond somewhere, did it actually disappear? Oh no, I think it may have. That was a very, very interesting dragonfly though. I bet his sister Raven would have loved to uh, see one of those. So if we happen to catch one again, see it drifting past our screen, we'll have to try our best to hunt it down so we can maybe bring it to the forest colony to offer up to Raven as a gift. Now it is starting to get super late, but before we have Finch head in for the night, I do want to see if maybe we can buy some of those walls that we saw before. Maybe just uh, some little decorations to spread around Claudius's den. So it looks like we can buy um, packs of walls. It doesn't really seem like there's a difference between them. Why don't we go with five for 50 mews? Does seem a little bit expensive, but if it's going to help us fortify our uh, homelands, then I'm sure it's going to be worth it. Did he already go in for the night? Okay, good night, Claudius. It doesn't look like we can interact with his den either, so we can't see what he's hiding in there. But I do see that he has a mysterious sword hidden away in all that tall grass. Very, very interesting. He is just the cutest little thing, though. I can't wait to I'll learn more about him. Let's go back into the build menu, though. And then we should be able to select our walls this time. Yeah, we can change um, the style of these, too. From plain to shabby. Oh, these are like the boxes that Ember had right next to his shop. That is so cute. We'll have to keep that in mind because this might be a good decoration to use for uh, some of our other cats. The new ones that we decide to invite. So I notice that most of the colonies tend to have like a fence or something around the outskirts of their territory. Which makes sense because that's a good way to ensure that nobody can sneak in from the corners. So for now, we might want to consider building up our walls like this. And we know that we can always move these later if we don't like where they're located. We don't want to make it too difficult for ourselves to get into the colony either. But I think this will be a pretty good compromise. It's right by M. Claudius' den too, so he can keep an eye on the outskirts of our territory with ease. So things are really starting to come together in the brand new feather colony. And I am super excited to see what's going to happen tomorrow when we go visit the skirmish that we've set up on the borders of the mountain domain. So I hope you guys are looking forward to watching Finch's story grow. I know I can't wait to see what is waiting in his future. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys!